Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're doing well. I have a really quick tip today when using volumes in Redshift and some tips for kind of changing the density of them so that you have a bit more flexibility. All right, I have my volume here. We're gonna go ahead and use a smoke plume from our store. You can go ahead and check those out. And what we're gonna do is go to create material, volume material. And we're gonna drag that onto our volume. First thing we gotta do is under the channel in the scatter, we're gonna click the little presets, go down to RS volume and click density. Because these are smoke, all we have to worry about is that density. We don't have to go down to the emission and add a temperature or anything. All right, that's all we gotta do. Let's go ahead and hit render and we'll talk about some shading tips really quick here. All right, so this is how it looks default. This is a low res file. We also have a high res one if you want, but for demonstration, we're gonna use the low res one. Now, most people uh, change all the settings right in this texture here, and they're gonna change things like the scatter coefficient. So if we play with that, it'll make it brighter. And might also play with this ramp or the different settings or the knots on this ramp. So that's one uh, area that you can tweak to kind of dial in your settings. Another thing that you can do is go down to absorption, play with the absorption coefficient, and this is gonna kind of make it uh, a bit darker. But one thing that a lot of people don't know about is there's also this advanced tab. Now let's say that we wanna take this smoke and make it very thin and transparent and wispy. Maybe we could even take this smoke plume and say make it a cigarette smoke that's very wispy. What you can do is instead of going to these settings right away, a nice thing to do is start out on this advanced tab. And what we have is our density remapping. And this is a really nice way to quickly remap these values to get different looks. So old min should be zero, old max should be one, new min should be zero, and it's the new max that we're gonna play around with. And right at default, it's one, but if we increase this, we're going to introduce a whole bunch of extra data to this volume, which is pretty interesting. We're actually sort of reverse clipping this. We're opening up the aperture to let more of this volume out. And when we go this way, we're clamping it down and we're kind of compressing the area that we're allowing this volume to expand into. So just by playing around with this, you can think of this as a black and white clipping slider. It's pretty interesting how volumes respond to something like this. But if we kind of dial this back down, all of a sudden you can get exactly what we're looking for, which is more of a transparent wispy look, just by playing with that one slider in the advanced tab. And once we get that dialed in, we can go back to the basic and play around with this. But to get the sort of thickness or thinness of your volume, this is a great place to start in Redshift. I hope you found that useful. Um, make sure to check out Motion Lab, which is a new site that we just launched. And it's a great site to really quickly search exactly what you're looking for, preview them, and then download them. And we got some low cost subscription options if you wanna get an annual subscription or a monthly one, or you can even buy the pieces individually. So check that out, motionlab.net, super proud of it, and I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope that it was useful, and we'll talk to you next time. Ciao.